Okay, so in our last lecture, we looked at uh, optimization, multivariable optimization, unconstrained optimization. So we derived uh, conditions for optimality, necessary and sufficient condition. Followed by the next lecture, we looked at application to solving linear in parameter least square problem. Okay, what is nice about linear in parameter least square problem is that uh, the solution, optimal solution or the optimal value of parameters, least square estimates can be computed analytically. So, just to have a recap, so this is just solution of linear least squares, okay. We have collected data and we have some model. Uh, this model could be in general, I said uh, could be y is equal to theta 1 f 1 x theta m plus error. In general, you have a model of this form where uh, f 1, f 2, f 3, f m are some known functions. Simplest one we looked at was polynomials but it did not be polynomials, it could be any functions which are known functions and then you are doing a function approximation. If it is polynomials, it is polynomial approximation. Uh, we have collected data, uh, we said this is u not y and one minute, we did not use x, we use z here. So let me correct that. Okay. So z is the independent variable, it could be anything, it depends upon in this case, it did not be space, it could be any independent variable. We looked at many examples from chemical engineering where we could use this method for and then we have this data collected which is u1, u2, un at points z1, z2, zn and using this data, we wrote number of linear equations and finally we put it in a matrix form u is equal to a theta plus e where e is the modeling error and then you know we found out theta least square is equal to uh, minimum or minimize with respect to theta e transpose. Now, I am going to make a little small modification here as compared to the previous development. I am going to say here E transpose W E okay, where E is equal to U minus A theta. I want to solve this problem where W is a positive definite matrix. is a symmetric positive definite matrix. In general, you can solve the problem. Earlier, we had looked at a special case of this that is E transpose E where W was identity matrix. Identity matrix is a symmetric positive definite matrix. Okay? This is a special case which we have looked at earlier. I am just generalizing this. W can be, see for example, in some situations, when you collect data and fit a model, you know that a particular observation is more reliable okay, or particular observation is less reliable. So, you could attach weight, positive weight, okay. a small weight if it is less reliable, a large weight if it is more reliable. So, that when you optimize, okay, the optimizer will give more importance to those which are accurate measurements, will give less importance to those which are less accurate measurements. We could actually uh, twist this or sometimes you need to do this because of you know variables have different uh, values and so on. So, this is this is in general general formulation in which I have some weighting matrix here which is a symmetric positive definite matrix as you know that this will define a two norm and so on right. If you take a positive definite matrix it will be defining a two norm. So, if I have this phi which is 
E transpose E, E transpose W E, then if I use necessary condition for optimality, then it is dou phi by dou theta is equal to u minus a theta transpose u minus a theta and then we had these rules of differentiation of a scalar function. So, this is a scalar function from n to r, this is a scalar function from sorry m to r, r m to r, theta is a m dimensional vector, this is a function of theta, theta is a m dimensional vector in general. So, this is a this is a scalar function and we had rules of differentiation of a, of a scalar function with respect to a vector and using that we came up with a formula which is we will get this equation if you use it a transpose w a theta least square is equal to a transpose w u. Okay. And finally, we argued that if columns of A are linearly independent, then this matrix is invertible. This is a symmetric matrix, symmetric positive definite matrix, very nice matrix and theta least square is equal to. So, my least square estimate, my least square estimate can be written as A transpose W A inverse. We also said the special case when W is equal to i, we looked at a special case, when w is equal to i, a transpose a inverse a transpose is called as pseudo inverse of matrix a. Okay. Remember here, a is a non-square matrix, a is a n cross m matrix, theta is a m cross 1 vector and e is n cross 1 vector. Okay. So, this is a non-square matrix. So, non square matrix and then we, look, we talked about its inverse or we talked about its pseudo inverse, pseudo inverse is defined by A transpose A inverse A transpose. Okay. So, far so good. So, we have this uh, derivation. Uh, one of your classmates was asking me in the last uh, after the last lecture is that uh, she knows about this formation uh, formula using summations you know least square estimate using summation, summation, summation. Yeah, you can actually this formula and that is not different, they are one and the same and deriving that summation formula starting from this formula is part of one of the exercise problems. Okay. So, the exercise problem which I give you next for least square estimation will have that problem, you will derive that summation formula for least square estimates. Okay. So, those two things are not different, this is a more elegant compact way of expressing the same thing it is it is not different, it is one and the same thing. Okay. So, the regression formula which you know with multiple summations can be very elegantly expressed through this A transpose A inverse A transpose the same thing exactly identical thing. When you solve the problem you will realize that it is nothing different the same same problem. Okay. What I want to do now is so far so good we have done lot of algebra we have found out the condition for optimality then we said the second derivative here. What is the second derivative here? The second derivative here that is dou 2 phi by dou theta square. This is nothing but A transpose W A to A transpose W A that will be second derivative. The second derivative is always symmetric positive definite okay, which means the stationary point which you have got through this is the stationary point this is the point at which the gradient is equal to 0. Okay. At this point, at this point the second derivative is given by this matrix and this particular matrix is symmetric positive definite you have reached the global minimum. Okay. So, this is this is fine this is lot of algebra. I want to give some geometric insights into what is really happening. Okay. How do you relate this to your school geometry? Okay. That is what I want to elaborate next. So, what was the thing here? Here, uh, you had a non-square matrix, right? You had 
100 data points, maybe only three parameters. We saw the example of CP versus temperature. Okay, so M was small, N was large. You are fitting some function, some polynomial, and the number of parameters were much much less than the number of variables. Okay, to get in an insight into what is happening. Let us not work with 100 dimensional spaces. We cannot visualize in 100 dimensional spaces, right? But in three dimensions, I can visualize. Okay, so I am going to create a dummy problem from this, which is very, very simple. Three equations in two unknowns. Okay, three equations in two unknowns. It is a representative problem for this equation. See, what is, the, what is the main thing? Number of equations is more than number of unknowns. And then you are not able to satisfy all the equations simultaneously. If you are able to satisfy all the, equa the equations simultaneously, okay, then you know error would be zero. But error is not zero. You are finding out least square solution. Okay, what is the error? How do you compute the error here? What is the error vector? If you substitute this theta, you will get the error vector into this equation. Okay, so if I substitute here. If I substitute uh, E is equal to U minus A times A transpose W A inverse A transpose W U. Okay? So I can write this is I minus A A transpose W A inverse A transpose W times u. Unless this matrix is 0, you will not get exact satisfaction. So, these equations are such that you cannot satisfy all of them simultaneously. You are trying to find out a least square solution, trying to find out a least square solution and then there is always going to be an error vector such that probably no equation is satisfied. Okay? So, the, so, the curve which you get here will not probably pass through any of the points, quite likely. Okay, it only captures the tendency in the data, not not going through every point in the data, because. Okay, so now let's uh, let's try to get some insights by taking a simple dummy problem. So I'm going to take a simple problem, in which uh, I have this equation to be satisfied. I want to solve this equation 1 2 3 1 2 3 is equal to I hope that uh, this vector cannot be defined by just linear combination of these two let us uh, I have not I have just created this problem right now I do not know whether uh, so when when can you solve this exactly just just think about the geometric insight of it about it when can you solve this. When can you actually exactly solve this? How can you write this equation? Is there a, another way of writing the same equation? Okay, I will move to here. So, I can write this as 1, 2, 3 is equal to theta 1. 1 0 1 plus theta 2 1 1 1 0 plus e 1 e 2 right I have taken a very simple problem three equations two unknowns two unknowns in the terms of actually there are five unknowns actually there are five unknowns e 1 e 2 even e2, e3, theta1, theta2, there are 5 unknowns, but well, as far as the parameters are considered, there are only 2 unknowns, theta1 and theta2, 2 parameter unknowns. Okay. If I write it like this, do you get some more insight? Yeah, so theta1 times this vector, let us call this as 
v1 and let's call this vector as v2 when can you solve this exactly when will the error be equal to 0 can you say something about the span don't forget the last quiz all possible linear combinations of v1 and v2 what will it give you okay let's say this is my v1 and this is my v2 let's say this is my v1 and this is my v2 okay what will it span what will it span v1 and v2 all possible linear combinations of v1 and v2 what will it span it will be a plane passing through the origin right when when will the error be equal to 0 say it say it louder this is when this vector on the left hand side lies in the plane okay if this vector left hand side vector it exactly lies in this plane which is span of these two vectors okay all possible linear combinations any any vector in this two dimensional plane can be generated by a linear combination if it doesn't what it means where is this vector outside okay let's pictureize this as this vector so this is my u vector this is my u vector this is u okay so this is here this is my u vector so u doesn't lie in this plane it doesn't lie in this plane so i need to find out what do i need to find out a least square approximation see because ultimately i am finding out an approximation which is theta 1 times this vector plus theta 2 times this vector that approximation is going to lie where that approximation will lie somewhere here right a vector see this vector will be theta 1 times v1 plus theta 2 times theta 2 times v2 this vector theta 1 times v1 plus theta 2 times v2 cannot leave this plane right it is linear combination of these two vectors it cannot leave this plane okay so uh, in your school geometry you have studied this problem point which is closest point which is closest to this vector in this plane how do you get it drop a perpendicular okay i just want to show that what we have done till now by so called least squares is nothing but drop a perpendicular okay the point which you will hit the point which you will hit here if you drop a perpendicular what is the best approximation in the least square sense i'll show that this point is nothing but the point which is the least square approximation of this vector in this plane okay i want to find out best approximation of this vector in this plane in the least square sense from the school geometry i know just drop a perpendicular okay this is the point which is closest to this to this plane okay point which is closest to this plane okay so so this 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 point and what i actually get by solving theta least square so what should be the theta that gives you this theta least square should be a transpose a inverse a transpose uh, u this will give you the theta and this this particular vector would be uh, you know this approximation let's call this u cap will be a times theta ls this will be u cap okay u cap is my approximation what is this vector error vector this is if this is u cap if this is this u cap is a times theta ls 
okay so my equation is error equal to u minus a times theta ls my equation is u minus okay if i just complete this uh, parallel this uh, you know law of vector additions this is nothing but error vector in least square approximation the error vector is perpendicular to the plane this you know from your school geometry right i am just generalizing that result in any inner product space what is very very elegant is that same result can hold in any inner product space in any hilbert space you can uh, have the same result which you know from school geometry finding minimum distance of a point from a plane okay so this problem this problem see it's you cannot visualize when suppose suppose this suppose here let's go back here okay suppose you had 10 equations suppose you had 10 equations in two unknowns okay i cannot visualize in the 10 dimensional plane but linear combination of two vectors in 10 dimensions what is it like it it will it will look like it will look like a plane like this something like this if i if i were a creature in 10 dimension i could be you know it would be possible for me to visualize a nine dimensional plane but we cannot so but it will look something like this and then what you are doing you are just finding out the point in the plane which is at a minimum distance from this point which is lying outside the plane okay geometrically what you are doing is what is called as projections okay i am projecting this vector onto this plane projections you probably have done when you are doing your engineering drawing right so projections is something which you know from your engineering uh, or right from your school right? okay so even though you cannot visualize 10 dimensional thing conceptually or you know it's not going to be different i mean if you are able to uh, visualize that it would look almost the same so i just want to show that if i just proceed through this geometric ideas i'll get the same thing okay that is my next that is my next uh, task okay let me do a general derivation with only two vectors okay in my notes there is a derivation with only one vector one vector means distance of a point from a line i start with that and then i generalize it to distance of a point from a subspace actually in general if there were three if there were three vectors okay see if this problem if i just modify this problem saying that if i just modify this problem and then here left hand side is let's say this is not coming from some physical problem i am just arbitrarily creating some set of equations let's say i have this problem okay now here here what can you say the least square solution will be lying in the subspace spanned by this column vector this column vector and this column vector the least square solution will lie in the subspace spanned by this column vector this column vector this column vector okay the component which is outside the subspace is given by this error okay we are able to split actually geometrically speaking we are able to split a vector into two components one lying in the in the subspace and one orthogonal to the subspace okay we are able to split the vector through least square what is the subspace subspace is spanned by linear combination of columns okay linear combination of columns will give me subspace this e1 e2 to e5 will give me the component which is outside the subspace together they form this whole vector okay together they form this whole vector now i want to generalize this and then just show you that what we have derived well i'm going to take a case where w is equal to i okay wetting matrix is equal to i i am not going to complicate uh, life by so that will give me some handle to 
okay so let's write so this is so this is let's let's call this uh, okay in my notes i am calling this vector as a1 this vector as a2 this vector as a3 okay so in general in general i can write my model as u is equal to capital u this my original model is uh, u is equal to a theta plus error and i am writing my a matrix as a1 a2 a m there are m columns these are column vectors there are m columns okay in this case there are three columns here there are m columns okay so i can write this equation as u is equal to theta 1 a1 plus theta 2 a2 i can write this vector equation okay now to simplify life let's take a case where there are only three vectors okay so generalization to m is not so difficult so i will just take theta 1 plus theta 3 a3 plus e this is the case when we have taken m is equal to 3 there are three parameters theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 i want to find out least square estimates of least square estimates of this okay using okay i am going to call this vector see this vector this vector belongs to the subspace which vector this vector p i am going to call this as a projection vector projection vector theta 1 a1 plus theta 2 a2 plus theta 3 a3 this is the projection vector this is the projection projection of u on okay this is projection of projection of see it's linear combination of a1 a2 a3 so this p vector has to lie in the subspace spanned by a1 a2 a3 right it has to lie in the subspace spanned by a1 a2 a3 so this is a projection i am going to call this as a projection of u onto subspace spanned by what is it that i want to minimize how do i find out this i find this out by minimizing square of distance right i want to find out so my problem is find theta such that error to norm is minimum right to norm of error is minimum right okay so let's let's start doing this so what does it mean so i want to minimize a phi which is two norm error square which is p minus u or u minus p u minus p right but what is this is a two norm we are working in the inner product space so two norm square is related to the inner product how so this is u minus p u minus p right inner product of vector u minus p u minus p okay now my model is this u is equal to uh, theta so i can write phi to be inner product of u minus theta 
थीटा वन ए वन प्लस थीटा टू ए टू प्लस थीटा थ्री ए थ्री इंटू यू माइनस पी पी इज अगेन दिस वेक्टर आई कैन राइट दिस वेक्टर अगेन हियर राइट वॉट इज पी थीटा वन ए वन प्लस थीटा टू ए टू प्लस थीटा थ्री ए थ्री आई कैन जस्ट पुट दिस वेक्टर हियर इन प्लेस ऑफ पी इट विल बी अ लॉन्गर एक्सप्रेशन ओके हाउ डू यू फाइंड आउट द मिनिमम वॉट इज द नेसेसरी कंडीशन can you do this see my necessary condition is we'll have to expand this but before expanding let us apply the necessary condition okay so my necessary condition for optimality is do phi by do theta 1 is equal to 0 do phi by do theta 2 is equal to 0 and do phi by do theta 3 is equal to 0 right these are my three these are my three conditions is everyone with me on this these are my three conditions okay if i differentiate this phi with respect to theta okay what will i get okay just look at just look at it you are differentiating only once okay uh if i differentiate only to this first vector what will remain only a will remain okay you can check this but i am just going to write the final result that do phi do phi by do theta 1 this is nothing but you will get here a1 comma okay if i differentiate this i am skipping in between steps you can actually expand this you can expand this entire inner product okay you will get many terms okay you have to patiently find out the inner product of each element by element you know the rules of expanding in the product right right so what i'll get is a1 in a product with this is equal to 0 so actually what i am getting here is that a1 in a product u minus p is equal to 0 because this is projection vector this is my projection vector okay so what i am getting is a1 in a product u minus p is equal to 0 what is what is this u minus p error vector so what it says is that error vector is perpendicular to a1 direction same thing if you do with theta 2 okay so setting do phi by do theta 2 is equal to 0 you will get a2 u minus p is equal to 0 okay you will get this equation and well the third equation that you will get is the third equation that you get is do theta do phi by do theta 3 is equal to 0 so that is equal to a3 u minus p this is equal to 0 so what is the meaning of this what is the geometric meaning of this that this error vector is perpendicular to a1 a2 and a3 okay if error vector is perpendicular to a1 a2 a3 will be perpendicular to linear combination of a1 a2 a3 yeah what is linear combination of a1 a2 a3 it will be in the span of a1 a2 a3 it is in the subspace of a1 a2 a3 okay so this error vector is perpendicular to to the span of a1 a2 a3 okay which means which means best approximation of u in the span of a1 a2 a3 
is obtained just by dropping up, you know, this is just generalization of the result from your school geometry, drop a perpendicular from a point to a plane, okay, that is the best approximation of that vector in that plane, that is all, okay, that is all we are generalizing into a general function space or into a general uh, inner product space, okay. Now, when is this possible? This is possible only when you have inner product defined, that is very, very important. Okay, why we why we are so much why we are so much you know why we like least square approximation as against you know one norm approximation or infinite norm approximation because because this least square approximation comes attached with uh, you know inner product inner product can be related to the geometry you can talk about perpendicularity you can talk about projections the same idea of projections which you use in three dimensions okay distance of a point from a plane, it just drop a perpendicular, okay, same idea is actually being, uh, is actually being said here. So, all that we have proved is, if I, if I redraw this uh, figure in two dimensions, if I have this plane, which is spanned by say V1 and V2, so this is my V, A1, let us say this is my A1 and A2, and this is a vector, this is my vector U, Okay, this this is my u vector. Then this is the p vector, projection vector. This is the projection vector. Okay, this is the projection vector. And uh, here, here, uh, what we are getting is this projection vector, and this error vector e here is u minus p. Okay, this is the special vector such that this error, see if I take any other vector here, this error will not be perpendicular. There are so many ways of approximating, you know, this in this plane. I could approximate here, I could approximate here. Somebody will say that this is the approximation. This is one possible way of approximating. What is the least square approximation? Perpendicular. Okay least square approximation is the perpendicular. Now, I need to go back from here and show, I should start with these three equations and show that well, what you have got actually is nothing but the same formula of A transpose A inverse. I need to derive that, right? I have just showed geometrically that these three vectors, uh, so if I take A1, A2, the plane spanned by this and uh, the error is perpendicular to this plane, plane, plane spine this and, and so on. So, now I need to go back and connect to A transpose A inverse business, I will do that. Okay. How do I get theta 1, theta 2, theta 3? I get theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 by solving these three equations. You know, A 1 in a product u minus theta 1 a 1 plus theta 2 a 2 plus theta 3 a 3 is equal to 0, right, right. Well, in three dimensions, in, in general in m dimensions, how do you with real, real values, what is the inner product, simple inner product? A transpose B, you know, if there are A and B two vectors. So, here this will be, so this first equation, this first equation I can rewrite as A 1 transpose U is equal to, I am just skipping one step in between, okay. I am just writing theta 1 A 1 transpose A 1, right. A 1 with A 1, A 1 with A 2 and A 1 with A 3, right. Theta 2 A 1 transpose A 2 plus theta 3 A 1 transpose A 3, right. What is the second equation? Second equation is a 2 u minus p is equal to 0, right. 
u minus p is equal to 0 what will it give you a2 transpose u is equal to a2 theta 1 a2 transpose by the way a1 transpose a1 is it a scalar always a scalar a2 transpose a1 transpose a2 is it a scalar always a scalar right so i'll get another equation theta 2 into a2 transpose a2 plus theta 3 a2 transpose a3 okay i'll just write the third equation just just follow with this same thing i'll get a3 transpose u is equal to theta 1 a3 transpose a1 plus theta 2 a3 transpose a2 plus theta 3 a3 transpose a3 is everyone with me on this i have just rewritten those equations i started with the geometric i started by saying that well what we have done is nothing but projections okay this error vector is perpendicular to a1 error vector is perpendicular to a2 okay these are the equations which i have written error vector perpendicular to a1 error vector perpendicular to a2 and in this case error vector perpendicular to a3 how many equations and how many unknowns three equations three equations and three unknowns what are the three unknowns theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 so what do i get here what do i get here right hand side i can write this as a1 transpose a1 a1 transpose a3 and we can just collect it in the vector matrix form this is a3 transpose a1 a3 transpose a3 this into theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 right the right hand side i can write as a 3 cross 3 matrix okay just check this matrix is nothing but if i start with a is equal to a1 a2 a3 these are the three columns of a matrix okay very very easy to check that this matrix is nothing but a transpose a is multiplication of a transpose a is this matrix okay the algebra ties in with the geometry very very nicely okay algebraically we we arrived at this condition a transpose a theta is equal to a transpose u now just look at this left hand side what is left hand side the left hand side i can write here the lhs i can write as a1 transpose a2 transpose a3 transpose u what is this a transpose u right a transpose u okay that is the result which we got purely by doing uh, you know algebra of necessary condition of, of optimality so a transpose u is equal to a transpose a times theta the square solution right so this is my theta okay i started with the geometric argument of projection onto a subspace i was able to recover the least square formula which is a transpose a transpose a times theta is equal to a transpose u what is the least square estimate this theta will be least square estimate of course we call it estimate so we give a hat above it so this is estimate of theta this is not there is no way way of unique way of finding out theta there are multiple ways but least square estimate is unique how it is computed a transpose a 
times theta is equal to a transpose u a transpose a if columns of a are linearly independent okay a transpose a is always invertible this is always a square invertible matrix symmetric positive definite square invertible very very nice matrix okay this matrix which we study in linear algebra does appear in a very very practical application you are trying to fit a curve in some data or if you try to fit a function in some data positive definite symmetric invertible matrix okay so this this particular result a transpose a times theta least square is equal to a transpose u we could we could recover this result purely through geometric arguments of projection we said that basically what is happening here is we are trying to find out that vector in the plane spanned by a1 a2 which is at the closest distance from a vector which is outside this plane why we need least squares because this vector is not lying in this plane what will happen if this vector was lying in this plane error would be zero okay what is the extreme situation this this u is perpendicular okay so what is the best approximation zero okay if u is perpendicular probably you have done wrong modeling you know error should be small not that error <laughs> the vector is perpendicular to so this is this is a very very nice result this ties in with actually there is one more angle to hold 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 of this thing so we derive this result through algebra we derive this result through geometry we can derive the same result to statistics and you will get those summation summations which you are familiar with i am not going to go into statistical interpretation of the same thing i'll upload my notes on statistical interpretation but if i go into statistical interpretation of this result it will take at least two weeks of you know i have to introduce so many concepts but finally finally you will derive the same results you will get a different insight from the statistics viewpoint see i got a different insight into the same result through geometric viewpoint okay algebra didn't tell me much you know it just said that derivative equal to zero here i can relate it to my school geometry that's very very important okay so that is the beauty of this result you can actually show that the least square estimate obtained algebraically is nothing but projection of a point onto a subspace okay finding out the a, a vector in a subspace which is at the minimum distance from a point outside the subspace okay that is the that is the that's where you know that's why we work with inner product spaces hilbert spaces because angle comes you know attached with the inner product you can talk of orthogonality okay all these things are not possible in other uh, you know banach spaces so that's why hilbert spaces are so special okay so next lecture we'll continue on uh, some more algebraic properties of least square i'll show something more and then we'll move to uh, variety of fields engineering applications uh that is functional approximations and also solving partial differential equation or boundary value problems we'll revisit our problems again through this least squares approximation